Happy, Happy Pride, Pride Johnny. Johnny. San Jose's theme for this year's celebration is P-R-I-D-E. People, respect, individuality, diversity, equality. And it's the 34th year of Pride celebration in the town immortalized by Dionne Warwick 41 years ago. Co-executive producer Eric Chan, who knows the way to San Jose, is there to tell us how 15,000 people celebrate Pride. Hi, Roberta. San Jose continues its annual celebration of Pride for the 34th time. This year, San Jose Pride produced an inclusive and entertaining event with Family Day on Saturday, June 13th, with free admission to the festival grounds and activities for children. And on the following day, Nearly 10,000 people attended the annual parade and festivities at Discovery Meadow. And if you want to celebrate Pride next year in a warmer spot of the Bay Area, you can find out more at sansaypride.org. In San Jose, this is Eric Chong for Outlook Video. Happy Pride, Roberta. Happy, Happy Pride, Pride, Eric. Eric.
What was once a badge of shame became an international symbol of gay pride. The largest pink triangle around is placed on Twin Peaks right behind us and it's the official kickoff to the Pride Weekend in San Francisco. Raymond, are you actually wearing summer clothing up there? Yes, Roberta, it's actually warm up here and for the first time I'm wearing short sleeves and sunblock. Just look at this wonderful view here. Wow. Wow. That's a sunny day. You hardly ever get that in the summer. In San Francisco. In San Francisco. <laughs> Every year, Art Carney and his friends and relatives volunteer putting up the pink triangle on Twin Peaks overlooking San Francisco. This giant symbol behind me is the annual commemoration of the gay victims of the Holocaust and a reminder of the ongoing inhumanity to repressed minorities going on right now around the world. This year's guest speaker is Academy Award-winning actress Cloris Leachman. The commemoration of the Pink Triangle atop Twin Peaks begins with the customary retelling of the history behind the symbol. Cloris Leachman adds her own signature to this annual speech. In the 1930s and 40s, there was nothing to celebrate concerning the Pink Triangle. Gays were forced to wear the Pink Triangle on their pockets in the concentration camps to identify them as homosexual, to set them apart from other prisoners. Can't imagine such a thing really being there. Triangles of various colors were used to identify each category of undesirable. Yellow for Jews, brown for gypsies, red for political prisoners, green for criminals, that's my color, <laughs> <laughs> and black for antisocials. <laughs> Purple for Jehovah's Witnesses, blue for immigrants, and pink for homosexuals. <clears throat> The pink triangles were slightly larger than the other colored triangles so that the guards could identify them from a distance. It is said that those who wore the pink triangles were singled out by the guards to receive the harshest treatment. And when the guards were finished with them, some of the other inmates would harm them as well. Just think how much history is on page one. At the end of, would you please be quiet? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the war, when the concentration camps were finally liberated, virtually all of the prisoners were released except those who wore the pink triangle. Many of those with a pink triangle on their pocket were put back in prison, and the nightmare continued. It was the same kind of senseless, irrational hatred that still haunts gays, Jews, blacks, and other minorities today. The Taliban in Afghanistan required non-Muslims to wear identifying badges on their clothing, just as the Nazis required their undesirables to wear identifying logos so long ago. History repeats itself. That is why Twin Peaks display is so important. We must remind people of the hatred and prejudice of the past to help educate others and prevent it from happening again. What happened in the Holocaust, this is my last line, must not be forgotten and must not be repeated. And though the treatment of gay people as second-class citizens happened 70 years ago, State Senator Mark Leno reminds us that history repeats itself even today. The way it unfolded in Europe in the early part of the 20th century, that no laws were broken, that first the Nazis passed laws so that it was illegal for Jews to marry, then it was illegal for Jews to own property, then it was illegal for Jews to own businesses. And soon they had outlawed an entire group of people. And once that is done, we know what the next chapter is. And so I remind my colleagues, as California is amending its state constitution to outlaw a group of law-abiding, tax-paying, loving citizens and denying them their fundamental right to marry the person he or she loves, wake up. Uh -huh. because it's happening here in California as we speak. First, Lieutenant Daniel Choi is a United States Army combat veteran of the Iraq War who served as an Arabic translator. He became a gay rights activist by coming out on the Rachel Maddow show this year. After his disclosure, the New York National Guard is recommending that Choi be discharged from the military. To all of our soldiers who have to serve in silence, to all of our brothers and sisters around the world who cannot be who they are. The time and the era for hiding, 
the time and the era for shame, the era of lying, the era of not being who you are is over. Shame is over. The Friends of the Pink Triangle are always in need of volunteers every year, so if you want to help out putting up this giant symbol, which takes a couple of hours, contact Art Carney at thepinktriangle.org. This is Raymond Donald Hong. Happy Pride, Roberta. Happy Pride, Raymond. This year's theme for the San Francisco Dyke March is Dyke Rights Equal Human Rights, 